Thank you for tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, where we discuss the latest news, rumors, and games of the NFL and college football. As always, I'm your host, Jeremiah, and we are back again. And I want to start off today's show talking about Kirk Cousins and the Washington Redskins. Well, there was a report yesterday that Kirk Cousins will not sign a long-term deal before the Redskins apply the franchise tag on him. So Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk reported, you know, he did this report yesterday of Kirk Cousins, and he cited that a source for knowledge of the situation that Kirk Cousins is not going to, he's not going to sign. He's not going to sign. He noted that Washington has nine days to apply the tag, but could avoid doing so if it ain't cousins to the new contract, which will be long term. But Kirk Cousins looked as the top free agent quarterback in this year's class. Uh, if Kirk Cousins decides not to sign uh, a long-term contract, which looks like it's more likely that's going to happen, and he does get the franchise tagged, put on him. He's going to probably sign it, no doubt about it. He's going to sign no doubt about it. And, you know, even if the franchise tag, the tag does get placed on him, you know, there, there's still a deadline to sign Cousins to a longer contract, which would be July 15th, even after the March 1st tag deadline passes. What Cousins will make at least $23 million if he is tagged this year. He made $19.95 million last year, so... There's no reason why he should not sign the franchise tag. Uh, it would definitely boost his salary per year. Uh, so when you put two and two together, that is a lot of money for two years. That is a lot of money for two years. Well, I I think well, I think the Redskins missed an opportunity to sign Cousins long term because Cousins has a lot of leverage right now. He has a lot of leverage. He had a pretty good game. He had probably his best season. He showed that he was durable. And I think he can start for a variety of teams this year if he decides to walk away from Washington. When you look at the free agent quarterback class this year, you get Brian Hoyer, Matt Barkley, Mike Glennon, Geno Smith, Sean Hill. You can even add Ryan Fitzpatrick on there too. When you look at those guys, they're they're not going to they're not gonna be a capable star in the league. Sure, they could probably be like a placeholder, but when you compare cousins to those guys, cousins looks elite on this list when he's next to those guys. So, all these guys on the free agent market make Kirk Cousins look better if he were happy to hit the free agent market. And I do want to point out that Kirk Cousins is only 28 years old. He has proved that he is durable. He was not he was not injured a lot. He stayed healthy and played 16 games in each of the last two seasons. He threw for a career high 4,917 yards, 25 touchdowns. And when you look at this year's draft, there's not really a whole lot to get excited about. You know, you got Mitch Trubisky, you got Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Kaiser, you got Patrick Mahomes there. There's not a whole lot of significant quarterbacks available this year. So, Kirk Cousins has all the leverage right now to pretty much decide where he wants to play for, honestly. If 
Kirk Cousins does not want to sign a deal before the franchise tag, then it looks like that's what he's going to do. He has all the leverage in the world. And he is waiting to for that franchise tag to happen before he can consider a long-term deal. And if Cousins does not go back to the Redskins and we'll just say this whole thing is a disaster and we'll just say if Washington cannot find a way for Kirk Cousins to stay long-term, that is going to set the franchise back. This was a franchise that had trouble finding a quarterback. They thought RJ3 was going to be the guy. But then they got Kirk Cousins in that same draft and Cousins ended up being the better quarterback. Could just, just look at RG3 where he's at right now. I know he got injured in his first year and he just hasn't been the same since, but his style of play just didn't fit the NFL game. And when you look at Cousins, he's more of a prototypical NFL quarterback. And I'm not going to sit here saying that, oh, you know, Kirk Cousins is an elite quarterback. He's not. He's a middle of the tier quarterback which is good enough i think to win games in this league and you know the redskins have been they've been to the playoffs with Kirk cousins too and you know they failed to make it this year but they were in a very tough division in my opinion so now i don't want to make an excuse there but when Kirk Cousins was not the starter. This was a different team before he walked on as the starter. And but when Kirk Cousins, you know, took over as the permanent starter in 2015, he's been his numbers have been phenomenal. He's thrown for at least 25 plus touchdowns. He's threw for he threw for 29. 2015 and then threw for 11 interceptions. That is an incredible ratio. He had a 69.8 completion percentage. And then last year, he threw for nearly 5,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. So he's been really good. He's shown that he is a viable starter in this league. He's had. When you put the pieces around him, he can do damage. He can do some work. And don't get me wrong. He's not the perfect quarterback per se. Uh, you know, he did. There was a couple of games where he did make some mistakes. There were games that maybe he was forcing the ball a little bit. But I do think if you put the right pieces around him, he's good. And he has shown that in Washington. I think he's played for... When I think that Washington Redskins are a top 10 offense whenever he's on the field. But you got to remember who else is on this team. You got Jordan Reed. You got Deshaun Jackson, who may not even stay. Uh, you got Pierre Garçon, who is also a free agent as well. So, for any of the teams that need a quarterback in this league, and there's a lot of them, you know, especially, and most of them are picking in the top 10. You know, you got Cleveland, San Francisco, you got Chicago. Jacksonville can probably use another quarterback. I don't know if they're ready to give up on Blake Bortles yet. You got the Jets. You got Buffalo. Cleveland has another first-round pick. And then the next team that could really use a quarterback is Houston at 25. But when... You look at the teams that need a quarterback. You know, Cleveland. He, I, I don't know if anyone can be very successful there. Uh, San Francisco, he might be pretty good. Maybe because of Kyle Shanahan. He knows that type of offense. Chicago. He can probably start for them right away. The Jets, he can definitely be a starter there. He'll make that team better, especially with the pieces around him. Buffalo, he'll make them a playoff caliber team. So, it'll be interesting to see if 
Kirk Cousins does become, if he stays with Washington this year, because I do think he will, and I do think he should. Well, I don't think that he should, but I think the Redskins should keep him because this is a franchise that has been, they have been awful before. They have not, they've been awful for like the, pretty much the majority of the 2000s decade. So it's important for them to keep Cousins long term. And if they don't and they end up franchise tagging him and he's there for one year, you know, Kirk Cousins has all the leverage right now in the world. He has all the leverage right now. And it'd be interesting to see what. It'd be interesting to see how this plays out. Well, it looks like it's time to take my first break here, and I'm actually going to continue some quarterback talk. I'm going to talk about Jimmy Garoppolo, and I'm going to discuss whether if this is the perfect time the Patriots should trade him. I'm going to talk about that when I get back to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Going to Me Concepts Football Podcast. And uh, this has really nothing to do with football, but uh, I'm also a huge NBA fan as well. And so the reason why I bring this up is because Sunday night there was a huge blockbuster trade that had to, that dealt the Marcus Cousins from the Sacramento Kings to New Orleans. And it looked like it was an unfair trade. And it looked like that the Sacramento Kings did not get anything back. And the reason why I bring this up is because uh, it made me think of Jimmy Garoppolo for some reason. And I thought that from, you know, a basketball perspective uh, that the Kings should have traded the Marcus Cousins to years ago. And then I bring I say that because it looks like Jimmy Garoppolo is one of the quarterbacks that will be on the move this offseason. Uh, you know, I talked about Kirk Cousins, how he can possibly be on the on the move. Uh Tony Romo, we talked about him a lot already. But Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, he's twenty three years old. And, you know, he's played behind one of the best quarterbacks of all time, maybe the best ever. I, I, he's not 23. He's 25. I'm sorry. And I was thinking to myself, after that DeMarcus Cousins trade from the Sacramento Kings, is this the is this the time for the Patriots to trade Jimmy Garoppolo? Like, is this the year they have to do it? Like, do they have to do it this year? Because if they wait... Uh, they're not going to get much back for him. Because remember, Jimmy Garoppolo has one year left on his contract after next season. So he's going to be a free agent next year, 2018. So if they wait, they're not going to and let him walk. They're not going to be able to afford him and Brady. And they're not going to get anything back for him. So me, I think this is the year that the Patriots need to trade Garoppolo. And where he goes, where he goes or where he plays, that's anyone's guess right now. And 
Jimmy Garoppolo had an interview with Am Schefter on his podcast, and he basically said where he'll play next year, his guess is as good as mine. So, you know, he looks like he doesn't care where he's at. You know, he likes... He looks like he likes being behind Tom Brady or being a starter in another NFL city. So it looks like Jimmy Garoppolo what doesn't really care where he will end up, you know, as long as he's playing football, as long as he's on a team. Looks like that he doesn't care, but does does he want to be a backup? Again, because as long as Tom Brady is there and he looks like he's going to be there for a while, uh, I think Tom Brady has at least two to three good years left in him. Does he want to wait that long to be a starter? And I know the sample size is small for Jimmy Garoppolo. He only has like two games in there. But I do think that he is a lot better than most of the quarterbacks in this draft. And I'm not saying that the teams that are picking high in this draft that need quarterbacks, I'm not saying that they should trade their first-round pick for him. But if you're one of those teams that need a quarterback, and there's a lot of them, there's a lot of them. You know, you got Cleveland. They always need a quarterback every year. You got the 49ers in San Francisco. They need a quarterback. One of the biggest issues on that team, one of the biggest holes, you got Chicago where I think he'll might end up because, you know, the Illinois connection there. You go to the Jets. That that can be a possibility. And then you got Buffalo and then you got Houston. I do think that Houston could potentially could trade their 25th pick. If they happen to fail on acquiring Tony Romo. And I do think Houston has a legit shot of getting Tony Romo. But when I look at these teams that need quarterbacks, you know, a lot of scouts, a lot of analysts that cover the draft, you know, most of them have said maybe these teams will get the quarterbacks maybe in the first round as an early reach or in the second round. But if I'm Cleveland, San Francisco, Chicago, if I'm picking in the top 10, I don't think any of this year's quarterbacks is worth the top 10 pick at all. I, I think you can get so many other better players in the top 10. Players that can make a players that can make plays for you for the next decade. So you can you need to find a playmaker, a game changer in the top 10 and I don't think any of these quarterbacks do it. Deshaun Watson doesn't do it for me in the top 10. I think Deshaun Watson is the best quarterback in the draft. But I don't think he's worth the top 10 pick. And Mr. Trubisky, uh, he's not a game changer by any means. Sean Kaiser, I don't think he's even worth a first round pick at all. But when I look at Jimmy Garoppolo, what he did last year, you know, he has a total of 94 attempts. And then last year, you know, he did play. He had two starts last season. And there were really great starts. When I looked at his starts last season. Okay, he started week one against the Cardinals. Threw for 264 yards, one touchdown. Looks like he had a pretty average game by the Patriots standards. But week two came around against Miami. And he was on fire. He only played three quarters in this game. He went 18 of 26. 232 and three touchdowns and they were ahead by 31 the three or 31 to 10 they had a huge lead in that game and when Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt that allowed the Dolphins to get back in the game so if Jimmy Garoppolo never got hurt the Patriots would have torched Miami probably 48 to something I don't know but I do think that this is the year that the Patriots should trade Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo. And they cannot pass on this chance because they can get so much for him right now. And if they wait, they're not going to get anything back for him. They're not going to get any anything back for him. 
But as far as my prediction where he'll end up, me, I kind of think he'll end up in Chicago. I think he will. I wouldn't be surprised if he does end up with the 49ers. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up with the Browns. I wouldn't be surprised at all. But I do think that the 49ers, I, I don't think they're really too focused on finding the quarterback of the future right now. Because I did hear that Kyle Shanahan's not, he's more focused on building the team. And he has time to find that franchise quarterback. Cleveland, they're always looking for quarterbacks there. And it looks like they can try to find that quarterback this year. But I feel like they might draft one in the first round since they got that 12th overall pick. I think they can probably use on one of the quarterbacks there. And by Chicago, I don't think they have Matt Barkley coming back. They don't got Brian Horry coming back. I think if Garoppolo go, does go to the Bears, I think they have to try to bring back Alshon Jeffrey. But Alshon Jeffrey looks like he may not want to play there anymore. But as far as where he will end up, just like he said, your guess is as good as mine. Well, I'm going to take my last break and... I'm going to discuss Herschel Walker. He made some comments regarding Ezekiel Elliott and the running back position in the NFL. So I'm going to discuss what he said when we get back to Going to Meet Concepts football podcast. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy dash football dash podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the Going to Me Concepts Football Podcast. And the Cowboys had a really great turnaround this season. You know, they went from 4 and 12 to 13 and 3 to become the top seed in the NFC. And you know, the team had a resurgence partly due to Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott, who were phenomenal in their rookie seasons. Well, Cowboys legend, Herschel Walker, uh, had an, did an interview with Dallas Morning News. And, you know, his Elliott's record, record-breaking season pretty much said that maybe there's a resurgence in the running back position. You know, Herschel Walker thinks that, you know, Ezekiel Elliott is part of a renaissance, so to speak, in the running back position. And so that so this is what Herschel Walker said in the Dallas Morning News. Quote, even though they talk about the West Coast offense and all this stuff, to be honest, whenever you want to win the Super Bowl, who do you go to? The running back, because you can pass the ball all you want to do, but when you want to win the game, you better be able to run the ball, and you better have that running back. End quote. So, to honestly, that that's honestly pretty true. I do agree with that. I do agree that you need to run the ball to win the game, and that's something that's really hurt the Falcons in the Super Bowl. If they would have ran the ball late in the game, the Falcons will be the Super Bowl champions. And I've said that over and over again ever since that game ended. So, I, the reason why I bring this up, you know, this Herschel, Herschel Walker story, uh, his comments that he made regarding Ezekiel Elliott, is, is he right? Is there a resurgence? Is there, are they viable again? Are they vital are, are they the main focal point of offenses? Are they slowly becoming that way again in the NFL? Like, is the running back position, is it slowly getting back to that? Are they slowly getting back to being valuable on the team? 
maybe for a couple of teams, but overall in general, I still feel like this is a passing league. And when I look at all the running backs on all the teams, only three of them come to my mind as being valuable. Zeke Elliott, he was really valuable this year. He was an MVP candidate. And, of course, you know, he led the league with 1,631 yards, led in carries, had 15 touchdowns. And, you know, he did have a great offensive line. But there's no denying the talents of Ezekiel Elliott there. So he's one of the... One of the few running backs I think that is valuable to the team. And then I look at Le'Veon Bell, who I think is the best all-around running back in the league. You see how this team can perform, this offense can can perform when he's not on the field. He's one of the few running backs that could really take over a game. And he's one of the, he just has a very unique running style. He's just so patient. And that's something that a lot of running backs don't carry. You know, that's not a trait that most running backs do. So Le'Veon Bell is one of those guys I do think that's valuable to the team. Partly because the team is different when he's not there. And DeAndre Williams has played well when, in relief of him. But in the playoffs this year when Le'Veon Bell was hurt, and that game against the Patriots, that Steelers offense did not look the same when he left that game. They did not. And then another running back that I think is valuable to the team is David Johnson. We saw the type of team the Cardinals are with David Johnson. And, you know, Carson Palmer did not have his Greatest year ever in his career, you know, back to having a 2015 MVP caliber season. David Johnson literally became the main focal point of this offense in Arizona. He became the main focal point. So what I'm saying all about this is that to a point, Herschel Walker is, I do kind of agree with him, but at the same time, I still think the quarterback is more valuable than a, than a running back in today's game. And when you look at most of the teams that are in the playoffs this year, you know, you got the Patriots. They have like 500 of them. They have 500 running backs, which is exaggeration. I know they don't have 500 running backs. You know, I look at the Steelers. They got Le'Veon Bell. You know, I look at the Cowboys. They got Ezekiel Elliott. The Packers don't have one. They've had a receiver being the starting running back this, you know, half of the year. And, you know, the Seahawks, they had trouble finding a running back this year. There's only, like, two teams, two playoff teams that really have a very valuable running back. I know used to make the playoffs. Lamar Miller was a starter there. But I kind of think Lamar Miller is one of those guys that, you know, you can if you brought someone better, you can pretty much replace him. Lamar Mill is not irreplaceable. ZK Elliott, Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, those guys are irreplaceable. You cannot replace those guys at all. And sure, maybe you can put Jay Ajayi there because, you know, he was one of the main reasons why the Dolphins became made a playoff run. He was one of those guys there. But if you were to find someone better, Sure, maybe Jay Ajayi could be traded to another team, but, you know, running backs aren't as valuable as they used to be. You know, like, they they just don't get a lot of big-time contracts like they used to back in the 90s or in the 2000s. They just don't. You know, it's all about the quarterback position. If you don't have the quarterback, if you don't have viable quarterback play, your team is not going to go far. You're not going to win many games. You can win without a running back, but you can't win without a quarterback. You just can't. So I think it'll be a long time from now that we'll have a resurgence, but, you know, we could have it in the next year or two because, you know, when you look at the draft this year, there is a lot of running back talent. It's probably one of the 
it's probably one of the best running back classes I've seen in a while. You know, when you got Leonard Fournette, who's probably going to be a top 15, top 10 pick. You got Dalvin Cook, who's probably going to be, he's definitely going to be a first round pick. Christian McCaffrey, borderline first round, second round. Then you got Dante Foreman, who I think is going to be really good no matter where he goes. And despite what you think of his off the field antics, I think Joe Mixon is a great talent on the field. And I, that's not even half the list. I do think that there can be potential to have a running back resurgence, but the fact that running backs don't last a long time in the league is the reason why I don't think they will be as valuable as quarterbacks. And I do think that you can win without a great running back, but you can't win without a quarterback. I just think that's just simply the way it is right now in the NFL. All right, well, before I go, I kind of wanted to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, it looks like they made some roster moves this uh, week. And the Miami Dolphins acquired Julius Thomas from the Jacksonville Jaguars for his 2017 seventh-round pick. And remember, the Dolphins and the Jaguars were talking about possible Brandon Albert for a Julius Thomas type of deal. They were just going to sweep him, but... It looks like they didn't really get that done. So in a separate deal, the Jaguars acquired Brennan Albert for a 2018 seven-round pick. So with that being said, you know, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they pretty much were tired of Thomas. You know, Thomas just, he was just a free agent bust. Uh, He was a bust in a free agent pool. And Thomas fills a need at tight end for Miami and you know, Jordan Cameron, Deion Sims, they've been injured. They've been very inconsistent. So I do think he can be a valuable offensive weapon there for Ryan Tannehill. And Thomas is familiar with Adam Gase's system as Adam Gase was the offensive coordinator in Denver when Thomas was there. So Thomas had his best seasons with the Broncos when he had uh, over a hundred, when he had 108 receptions. 1,277 yards and 24 t- touchdowns in a two-year stretch from 2013 to 14. So I do think there's some hope for him there. Uh, you know, Brandon Albert is a quality left tackle when he's healthy, but he's been injured during the past three seasons. But the thing I want to talk about the Jackson Jaguars is the Jaguars actually released Jared Oldrick on Monday after two seasons with the team. And the Jaguars, they signed Oldrick to a five-year contract that was worth forty-two and a half million, with twenty-two and a half guaranteed in March 2015. So he played in 22 games, but missed the final 10 last season with elbow and shoulder injuries. And the reason why I wanted to say this is because uh, when Older Oldrick got a call from the Jaguars, he posted on his Instagram of him on the beach on the phone. And there with the following caption that says, this is me getting released by the Jaguars. So I don't know if he was getting the call at the time or I don't know if he's enjoying that he got cut by the Jaguars. But I don't know. I kind of like it. I think it's there's a lot to say in that picture. So I, I kind of have to bring it up. But the Jaguars didn't get a lot of value for Oldrick and Julius Thomas. They spent so much money on these guys, and they didn't get any production back. So, you know, the Jaguars are one of those teams that has a very busy offseason ahead of them, and I they look like they're on track to be the worst team in the AFC South. I thought they were going to be really good this season, but it looks like, you no, know, Blake Bortles regressed. Uh, you know, it looks like Allen Robinson regressed a little bit, but that's probably partly due to the quarterback position. I think this defense uh, has potential to be good. They look like they're building a good defense there, and it looks like that can be the strength of the team moving forward. But this team needs to find ways to get productive players. They need to find a running back. They need to find valuable running backs. They need to find valuable play at the quarterback position they need to figure out if they want to move on from Blake Bortles or not but all I can say is that the Jaguars they pretty much 
missed on these two guys. Odrick and Julius Thomas, they missed out on these two guys. And they just haven't done a lot for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the Jaguars haven't done a whole lot either. Well, that's going to conclude my show. Uh, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. Anthony will be back tomorrow. And, of course, we will talk about any type of news that will occur over the next 24 hours. Well, as always, I'm Jeremiah. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. You guys have a great day and have a pleasant tomorrow. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.